Hello and welcome to the Build with Bear workshop. My name is Pat Bear. I'm here to build model kits and hang out with you. I'm going to turn the volume down uh, for notifications. Harold, thank you very much for hosting. Appreciate it as always. I'm throwing the Bear Cave, the Lego, the Scythe emote in the chat. If you are a subscriber, throw that emotes back at me. Let me know you're here to hang out. Dude wants his rug is here. Jam is here already. Already off to a great start with great people here in the chat. If you're not currently a subscriber, you can use another emote if you want. That's okay. Or just say hi. Um, this is now day two of experimenting with music. This time, the volume was loud enough that I know that Harold heard it. Yesterday, I played music before the stream started. And apparently, it was so quiet, nobody noticed. Uh, because I have no way of telling. I, I could tell that, but I just didn't notice it uh lashberg is here solf is here ultron's here as i said i will reiterate my previous statement this is already a stellar crew fantastic folks here to watch me build a 144 scale gundam wing hono the wing zero hono now you're saying to yourself pat bear i watched a lot of gundam wing i don't know anything about the hono well, that's because you probably don't buy Hobby Link's Japan magazine and you don't read the photo comic. Apparently, it's like photography, like big image and then text. It's like a visual novel kind of a thing in a magazine. And the Hono is from that. It's got it's a Gundam build fighters character. It's a wing with swords, with flame swords. And so, yeah, we're going to build it on stream, y'all. Um, that's what we do. Also, I got a new background image. Uh, I, I, there's nothing important about that. I just think it's cool. And then also, also, I, don't, I didn't change anything. Just the background image. And that shouldn't affect this. I'm getting a lot of, like, garbage around the ears here in my headset as far as the green screen stuff. And I don't know why. Uh, now I'm just having flashbacks to getting the LucasArts Magazine catalog that also came with Sam and Max comics. Yeah, but those were real comics, right? Those weren't like photorealistic images of a Gundam and then a bunch of text in the bottom, right? Were those real comics? I don't know. I never got LucasArts Magazine. But the Hono was from that, and I was like, okay. Um, there's also like document is another Gundam build fighters thing. It's the same idea, I guess. I don't know. It might be the same, but this is from that. Uh, and I'm, uh, we've built some of it. We built this. It's got some green in it. A little, couple stickers, a couple stickers. Uh, there's some green. There'll be some stickers in the head. I'm sure of it. So we'll put on, it'll be a whole thing. We're going to, uh, Build the backpack for this. We're going to build the head. Look, it's a 144 scale high grade. You know, yes, it is the, um, it is the, uh, Build Fighters high grade that looks very good. I mean, just, it looks real good, y'all. It's going to be cool. Excited to build it. I'm excited you're here. We're doing the pre-show preamble thing, you know? We had the pre-stream music playing now we're in the pre-show hangout where i chat with y'all before um as i said i got the new background i'm liking it so far i think it looks cool uh i like a fun comic uh like you know the tunnel i like the tunnel i think the tunnel was a cool illusion illusionary effect but i'm digging this I'm digging this thing it's another spacey you know, laser theme. I, I, a lot of my backgrounds lately have been lasers. Remember when I just had like a beach scene for a long time? We were just at the beach. I don't know why I did that. I think I needed a vacation when I was doing that. That was my phase where I really needed to get out of New York. Um, but I don't know. Um, oh, uh, so it's going to, uh, I'm going to send the video out tomorrow. Uh, folks that are Patreon supporters, the $5, $10 level, I got it. But, I'll tell you now, because the video got tomorrow, look what came in the mail. It's Master Roshi's wagon. Uh, this is a cool little kit. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to build this. I'm going to build this. Whoa, 
focusing. I'm going to build this after I'm done building the Hono. And then I got a Lego set to build after that. Let me actually check the votes on my Patreon. I put up a poll saying, hey, which Lego set should I build? Should I build the one that I haven't built in like two months? And I keep saying I have it. Or, uh, yeah. The votes are in. I'm going to work on a three-in-one surfer van. I can tell you that. That's This thing is going to take no time to build. These take no time to build. And then I got... We'll go from yellow wagon that Master Roshi drives to a beach wagon that also is going to look terrible on the green screen. It's going to look bad because it's a big yellow van. But it's a, a, it's a three-in-one. So we get the van... But we also, I'm just going to go to the overhead because overhead is easier. That's way easier to see what's going on. So that's what this is here. It's a three-in-one kit. So we have the van. Uh, we've got a, kind of a buggy. And then we also have like an actual like dune buggy thing and like a lifeguard tower. And that's the fun three-in-one. So what we'll do is we'll build like one of these. We'll build one of these two. Um, and then we'll finish with the server van because that's the one that we'll display or we'll have, you know, in the box. Because um, it will use the most pieces. Because sometimes, the like this, will, we'll have a ton of leftover pieces when we do this. Because they're just, it's the smallest thing. Um, but that's sometimes fun to build, build those out like that. Um, like I said, uh, I don't know why, nothing is different about my setup. I'm, I'm going to like adjust some lighting here. But yeah, I'm just getting a lot of uh, a lot of green screen problems, and I don't know why. But nothing is different. How y'all doing tonight? We're gonna get started with the Hono here. We're, we got our snipper clips, our trusty snipper clips. We got our tweezers because our stickers are small, so we're gonna use our tweezers. Um, but yeah, the chat. What's up? Type in the chat. How are you doing? How is your Thursday evening? Uh, maybe you were here last night for our monthly bonus stream where we play Jackbox games. Maybe you weren't. Uh, Ristafan is here. Ristafan was here yesterday and is now saying, doing okay. Ultron saying, I'm thinking about what to eat. Probably frozen burritos. Well, Ultron, maybe I can give you a suggestion. Why don't you heat those burritos up? Eat some warm or even hot burritos. Don't eat them frozen. Whoosh. Nailed it. Uh, I am so tired. Lashbrook says this heat is brutal. Lashbrook, I'm, yeah, I hear you. Dang, I knew I was doing something wrong. Yeah, Ultron, I mean, like, you don't have to, but you might want to consider, like, cooking them up. Uh, I'm sorry the heat is brutal for you. Uh, today here in New York, uh, it was in the high 70s. And then it rained and it dropped down. Now it's in the mid 70s, but it just poured out of nowhere. We're doing that thing in New York where suddenly it just fucking rains, and there was little to no indication that it was coming, and you just have rain again. Oh, I guess we have rain now. Here's fucking rain. Deal with it. Um, but yeah, let's get to building. As I said, this is a small kit. It's gonna be fine. Uh, hey, reminder, folks. Um, that's my low. Yeah. Um, reminder to y'all that, uh, I'm doing, uh, my stream tonight. I'm doing my stream on Saturday. I'm finally, I can do a Saturday, the normal time, 9 PM to 11 PM Eastern. Then my next stream will be Monday as normal. Then next Wednesday at 9 PM. I couldn't say originally what time it will be. It's going to be at 9 PM to 11 PM. I will be doing my stream. Uh, I'll do, that'll be the last stream of the month. So make sure that, um, your subscription, if it expires, if you use Twitch prime to renew it. So that way your subscription is, is ready to go next week. Uh, cause next Wednesday I'll do my last stream of the month because I know I can do that stream because a week from tonight, I will be in Seattle. And I'm going to try to stream from Seattle because I'm going out on Thursday. All I have to do on Thursday is land, check into my Airbnb, and get my badge. That's all I got to do. Um, so that's pretty easy. 
that's a pretty easy amount of things I have to do. So my hope is that I'll be able to stream from my Airbnb. I do not know if that is going to be possible. I am, as I said, hoping that it will be. If it is, if I can stream from my Airbnb, then a week from tonight, I will do a stream. It'll be like, hey, my travel, hey, what's going on this weekend? I got a Lego set to work on, a tiny little Lego set that I'm bringing with me, and I'll do that. Um, and if it works for my Airbnb, then the next Monday, the following Monday, which is in September, I'll do another stream because I have nothing going on on Monday at uh, at PAX. I'm gonna play. Monday is gonna be my day to play games. I'm gonna play games and I'm gonna hang out and I'm gonna see see people that I haven't seen yet, that kind of thing. And so I should be able to stream. And my streams will be 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, that's the goal. Um, because I shouldn't have anything going on. Uh, and I just have to remind myself to get food before I stream to then eat that after. Because here's the thing I learned. Downtown Seattle just shuts the fuck down on a holiday. A holiday Monday? Forget about it. Oh, no, it's a holiday. Nothing is open. Uh, I've uh, So I have to, like, find food early and make sure I get it. Because one year, I ate at a gas station because the area I was staying in was, there was just nothing was open. So it was a 7-Eleven attached to a gas station. And that was, I mean, it was a 7-Eleven, but it was not like a standalone 7-Eleven. So it wasn't a good one. And there are good 7-Elevens, so don't get me wrong. Okay, I don't know why this rocket is not going in. I may have pulled the wrong, it should be B-28. So let me see. Uh, I pulled both B-28s. Because there's also B-29. Which is similar, but different. So, I don't know why this rocket is not cooperating. But it's not. A rocket booster. Hmm. So, I'm going to attempt to get this going. We'll see. Uh, I did a gas station and Jimmy Jods at Gen Con 2016. Yeah. You do what you gotta do. Um, the last time, uh, last time I was staying there, I, uh, flew out on Monday night last year. And the year before, the year before I ended up, uh, going to, um, Buffalo Wild Wings because they were open. What I ended up doing was ordering pickup, and I went and got my food, and I didn't eat there. I brought it back to the Airbnb I was staying at, because it was open. That's the thing, but but I'm, I don't think I'm staying anywhere near that one. Uh, two of my PAX East trips included 7-Eleven dinner on Sunday, including the 2002 infamous PAX Easter. Yes, the year that PAX was... Oh, the year that PAX East was at Easter. Oftentimes, PAX East, because it's different weekends, because that convention center has a lot of things to get choice before PAX does, which at this point seems nonsense, but that's the reality. A lot of places get to choose um, before before PAX gets to choose. So that's why they end up with different things, um, which is frustrating, uh, obviously. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, so uh, a lot of times you end up with daylight savings and you lose an hour. And that's the worst. And then one year there was Easter. So like, yeah, it was like a lot of stuff was just shut down and not available and frustrating. Um, what are you looking forward to at PAX? Well, Ursavan, uh, I'm doing, I'm producing some panels. I'm on some panels. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to seeing a bunch of friends. Um, because I'm not tabling, I will have the time to go and look at games so I'm going to uh, make every attempt to go to uh, uh, Indie Mega Booth and actually like walk through it and like see stuff. Um, my hope is that on Thursday, when I pick up my badge, I will run into someone that has an uh, exhibitor badge that will lend it to me on Thursday. So I can like go and like see some stuff. Um, I'm going to hug Danny O'Dwyer. I'm giving Danny O'Dwyer a hug. And because I have not seen that fool in quite some time, and I'm very excited to see Danny. 
Um, I mean, I'm a no clip uh, supporter, patron supporter. So I'm very excited to see Danny. Oh, I'm going to hug Danny. It's going to be good. I'm going to, uh, let's see. What else am I going to do? Um, yeah, I got panels. Um, I'm on a panel that I haven't promoted because um, I'm on a panel that I can't talk about yet. But it's going to be real good, and I will talk about it more later But when I can announce it. But I'm on a panel. I'm doing a secret panel. I mean, it's the, the panel itself isn't secret. My involvement is secret. I'm excited about it. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm mostly just, like, doing stuff, seeing people. Um, I'm going to... Uh, is there... <laughs> Hug Danny seems like a weird Patreon tier. Both are a fan of Lesbrook had a, is there a no club Patreon level that gives out free hugs? As far as I know, no. Uh, I am cashing in my, I am a friend of Danny and happy to see him. And he has initiated hugs in the past. But also, and this is just general, folks. You start with the fist bump or the handshake or the wave. You start there. If you know a person very well, Maybe you go for the, and I can't do this in this screen, but you go for the like arms open, like is a hug a thing you'd like? Like it's it's like a shrug, but your arms are way lower. Like you're going to come up and hug them uh, if they want. Uh, I have friends who ask the question, do you do hugs? And then you can be like, not right now, or yes, or no. Um I used to be the hug first, ask questions later kind of a person. I'm not that person anymore because just some people don't want hugs or they don't want convention hugs or they don't want it to become a chain event uh, or they don't want to hug me. And okay, sure, I'm a hugger, but I also understand. And sometimes I'm carrying a bag. One time, uh, Mr. Brad Shoemaker went to go give me a hug, which I was very excited about because Brad rules. And uh, he knocked the camera off of a of a, a table. And luckily it was fine because it was in a bag. I should say it was a camera in a bag. But I was just like, oh no, there's too much going on here. It was very funny because I also, also was not expecting uh, a Brad hug, uh, which was very funny. Uh, if I ever start a patron, I'm going to have a hug tier. Yeah, I should maybe put a hug tier in. It's a six dollar tier. You get all the five dollar stuff, and then you can hug me at the convention. But also, you can just ask to hug me. And I, I guess I'm on a case by case basis with hugs these days. Like I want people to feel comfortable, but I also like know that sometimes I'm not up for hugging. Because sometimes I'm not up for hugging. Hugs are optional. Yes, indeed. And Arista Van says consent is king, which is yes. I mean, that's the real thing, right? Like, some people want the handshake. Some people don't even want the fist bump. Some people want the elbow bump, which I get. And I'll, I'll, I'll do the elbow bump if that's the if that they want that. Uh, I am here to make sure that people are comfortable with me, because at least I can do. Like I said, I am a hugger, but I'm also more. Uh, as much as I'm a hugger, I'm also a want people to feel. Okay and cool. Uh, I want people to be comfortable. And feel alright about it. But I don't know. I don't know about anything. No, I do. Um, I shot so many videos today. I'm a little loopy. I'll, I'll admit this, folks. I'm a little loopy tonight. Uh, we, I just put the uh, sticker of uh, the eyes on this i love this see-through this see-through orange so nice uh i hug just often enough that i am always hyper focusing my attention on specifically completing the mechanics of a hug well doing one that is yes so last brook you're in the moment you can't take yourself out you're like is this long enough oh i'm, I'm touching okay uh okay i'm making noise now and we're good i understand you don't want to mess up a hug, so you're instead hyper fixated on the hug you're giving. I get it, and I understand. Hey, uh, I want to say welcome, everybody. We got a good 
solid amount of folks viewing. Uh, we've been on uptick here in August, which I appreciate, you know. Uh, subscriber numbers, you know, January was the best month I've ever had. And it will probably be the best month I ever have for a very long time. Because people were incredibly supportive um, when I got laid off. And the end of January into February, I think. So February, I guess it was February was like the best month I've ever had. Uh, which I really appreciate. But also, uh, anytime new people come in uh, to check stuff out. Uh, like, I hope Recyclable comes in tonight. Uh, because Recyclable bought this kit off my wish list. So I hope they get to see me build it. Or at the very least, they can watch the YouTube archive and all that. Uh, the mechanics of a hug sounds like a melancholy novel or shoegaze band or PAX panel uh, or convention panel run by uh, Friend Shipping. Friend Shipping podcast. You know, that would be a good panel for them to put together. I'm on a really weird panel with with Trin, I should say, but like other people, I'm gonna look this up. We're gonna I'm gonna look up the actual description of this panel. Let's talk about it. We're talking about pack stuff. We can talk about that too. Um, cause Tom Tom Dyke asked me to like, hey, here are some panels that we are um submitting. Uh. And um, I was like, okay, yeah, let me know. I'm interested in being on panels. Networking, making friends for fun and profit, which is Sunday the 1st from 4.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. in Sandworm. Uh, it is not a streaming room. I do not know if they are recording it. I'm going to be there. I It's not my panel. But it's... Uh, but yeah, Tom's not even on it. It's Trin and Kevin Budnick from uh, who's one of the artists uh, from Cards Against Humanity, uh, and Anya Combs from Kickstarter, who I've never met in person but know great things about, uh, and Victoria Tran uh, from Kit Fox Games. And we're gonna talk about networking and friendship. Uh says, uh, I'm sorry, my, sometimes my monitor gets weird. Uh, it's extremely unfair that having friends, acquaintances in industry often makes getting started in that industry much simpler. While we cannot fix this fact, we can share tips on how to build relationships in your chosen field while also being a polite and reasonable human. On this panel, we answer questions such as, should I get business cards? When is it weird to ask for someone's email address? I just saw someone Twitter famous at the bar. Should I add them? Let us help you navigate one of the modern capitalism's greatest horrors, networking. This is, it's interesting that I'm on this panel because I am going to be doing networking at PAX West because I need a fucking job. And so I'm going to talk to people about hiring me to work for their company uh, or whatever. That So it's very funny that I'm going to be like giving tips for networking also, it's on Sunday, so I've already done a lot of it. And I'm like, mm, I wish this was on Friday so I could, like, remind myself some tips. Uh, also, people ask all the time, hey, Pat, how did you get involved in PAX stuff? How, how did this all happen? And I say, I was not a terrible person on the Internet. I introduced myself to Eric Pope when I saw him in public. Uh... First, that's the first thing. One, I met Eric Pope. Eric came to UCB Chelsea back in the day. I was house managing. I recognized him. Uh, there was an intermission. I came up and said, Pope, I'm a big fan. Giant bomb stuff. Hello. He said, hi. He was very surprised to be recognized at uh, out in public. I introduced myself. We got to chatting a little bit. Then we started talking on Twitter. And pretty soon... You know, it would be like I would get and follow from other harmonics people uh, at the time. Then when I went to PAX, I met those people in person, introduced myself, talked to them. In the meantime, uh, back in the day when Ryan, uh, rest in peace, when Ryan and Jeff would drive 
and do their uh, morning show thing, I would kind of chat in the chat with them. And then uh, I uh, had sent them some stuff from UCB because uh, they were both very much at the time into comedy death ray, comedy bang bang. Uh, and, you know, some of the people they were into were people I knew personally. So I was able to like talk to them about that, which was really fun. Uh, and then I pitched a panel that I had done as a show at UCB that I knew was good. It helps me a lot that Chris Kohler is a childhood friend of mine. Uh, I was in the same grade as his younger brother. Um, but Chris and I were certainly tight within a, a circle of friends. So having a panel that Chris Kohler and Eric Pope and then also Ryan Davis agreed to be on. That's a, hey, uh, here's a here's a great way to get a panel at a convention. Uh, book really great people to be on it. And then when the people organizing that panel are like, hey, did you actually agree to be on this? Who is this guy? Then they'll say, oh, this person's great. Uh, yeah, I'm doing their panel. It's not a lie. Because they'll do the follow-up. Because also, they'll do the follow-up. If you just say that, you know, Greg Miller is doing my panel and put his name on there. If they don't know you, they'll ask Greg, hey, did you agree to be on this? Like, they they follow up uh, when they don't know people that are submitting things. If they recognize names, they, they do the follow up, which I appreciate. Because otherwise, yeah, you could just lie. You could be like, yeah. This person's doing the panel. Ooh. Sometimes they don't check. Like, when Dave Lang submits panels, he just puts people on that he thinks are going to be there, that he wants on there. And then, like, they'll get accepted, and then their name will be listed, but they're not going to PAX. Uh, App Junkies used to do that. Drove me nuts because... Uh, uh, Omri Sullivan did that show once and they kept including her name in their submission and she, ha she hasn't been to PAX in years but I would think she was going because I would see her name and then it'd be like hey Omri so you're going to be at PAX and I'd be like no why do you think I'm going to be at PAX and it's like well, fucking app junkies think says you are that's really frustrating and annoying And then, I'm the guy that tattles on those people. I do. I have in the past, and I will again. I will tell an organizer, hey, this person's listed. They're not coming. Because it's annoying to me, and I would never do that shit. Because, um, yeah, wasted my time. Get my hopes up. Um. All right, so we put that on there. We put it on there. Head is done. I don't love all the stickers on this head. I'll admit. A lot of the cool parts of this are the stickers. Although I do like the uh, the headpiece there. The the parts coming off the back. Uh, I like all of the orange parts here. All right, so now we're gonna do the arm. Cool thing about the arm is. As a lot of kits, you know, you can do a lot of parts of it identical. And there will be stickers coming up, which, as always, is annoying, but whatever. So we can get a lot of the this done, you know, the left side and the right side at the same time. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, going back to that networking thing. Like, yeah, like, my story is weird, but the basic premise of my story, of how I got to do what I do is... I have, uh, I was fun online. I had a, an, an in. I uh, was a fun person. And then, to me, the most important part was Pope liked me because we knew a lot of people in common. Um, uh, Pope knew someone that I knew in New York who had done stuff in uh, and, um, 
And so there was a, there was a connection there where like we knew a lot of the same people. Uh, and so that was easy. But as far as the other coworkers was just like, when we met in person, I was, I wasn't a, f I was a fanboy, but I wasn't like awful. Like I was a fanboy for, I like what y'all do that you all are really fun. Let's hang out. I wasn't a booth barnacle, which is a thing I talk about a lot, uh, which I have been in the past. For those that don't know what a booth barnacle is, a booth barnacle is someone that clings to a booth at a convention. Uh, you're always standing at the edge of a table. You pop in three or four times a day. You just kind of take a chair and sit down without anyone saying anything. You make weird assumptions. You're there at the end of the day because you know that after they're done working, they're going out to eat and then you can get free food. Um, you don't have anything to do, so you're just kind of standing around. You're in the way. You're a booth barnacle. Um, and that is a thing that I have been when my friends have done conventions I have sometimes been that. And sometimes it's important to just be like, I'll see you later and leave and then not hang out. Um, and I still catch myself now and again doing that. Um, League of Heels has had booth barnacles. I'm a little... One, I... I don't let it happen. And I'm sure that there's a few people that are League of Heels fans or fans of uh, Bear Cave or whatever that, that got felt a little slighted by that. But, like, I don't let booth barnacles happen at my table or my booth. I, I have said, I have done the, like, cool, I'm going to do some paperwork. I'll see you in a bit. Or I have sent a person on errands before. I have asked people for a favor which to send them away. Because, you know, got to go. And that's different than the the reality of which people have done is I've also had an extra chair. I've had spots for people to come and sit and take a break. And that's different. I'm available. And also, this does not contradict at all my statement, which exists if I have a table or not, which is if you are at PAX or any convention that I'm at and you need help, find me. I am privileged when it comes to PACs in that I have access to people. I have phone numbers I can call or text to get things done. If you're feeling unsafe, if you're feeling uh, scared or lost, or if something happens and you need attention, find me. That is an ongoing promise. doesn't matter if I'm in band land or if I'm just hanging out. My DMs are open. If you spot me and something's weird's going on, please, please find me. I can't promise I can help in any situation, even especially at conventions that are not like PAX, where I have, like I said, privileges. Uh, I'm in a privileged position, but like, please uh, find me and let me help. Um, that is my, uh, you know, that is a mission statement of mine. Um, but also... That's different than, well, I have nothing else to do. I'm going to go stand in front of the Mega64 booth and just join conversations that happen there. Or Chris Straub can't not be nice because he doesn't have the capacity to be blunt if Casey's not there to, to do it for him. I'm going to go bother Chris Straub again. I'm not picking up on social cues that I am bothering this person. And there are people waiting to buy merchandise, which is the reason that Chris is one of the reasons Chris is there. Casey's not here to chase me away. I'm going to go stand there because Casey Egan, she'll chase you off. She will be brutal and she will be quick about it. And you will know it is time for you to go. Straub still does packs. He does. Um, uh, you will find Chris Straub at every U.S. packs. Uh, I don't know if he's doing Australia this year, but he goes to all the the four. Um, I don't know if he'll do Unplugged again this year. 
Uh, but Banland was better this like this past year, or Brandland they called it. But yeah, Chris Straub is you can find him in Banland. You can find him on panels. Um, Mr. K. Fabe himself, Chris Straub still there. Casey Egan still there helping him out. Uh, and yeah, it it's nice because Chris is really really good dude. Oh wow, I only saw him at acquisitions things, and then he's appeared, so I haven't seen him at all. Yeah, well here's the thing. Uh, people forget that Bandlands exists, especially at West, where it's on the fucking sixth floor, and you can you can go get off the escalator at the sixth floor, go walk down the hallway, see all of the expo hall, go back out that way you came, and never go to the diversity lounge on one end and Bandlands on the other end, and you could totally miss out on that and also anything that's happening on the small rooms on that floor as well in the sixth floor. Uh, it is designed in a way that you kind of have to go there. And I know that because I've had friends who've been like, oh, I went to Sixth Floor, I didn't see you. And it's like, you didn't go down the hallway where you could have seen me. Um, but yeah, uh, Chris is there usually. Uh, and uh, great dude. Loading Ready Run will be there. I, I guess, now, I'm wondering how much Gary is going to be there. But apparently... Gary has a table in Bandland. I don't know how much he's going to be doing there. This has been a weird half a year for Gary Winna with him becoming a Twitter, a Twitch streamer. Uh, and then his very terrible game that he pitched, Space Rocks, They let, like a version of it got made. And that doesn't make any sense. Because that's not... It's a joke. It shouldn't be a thing that exists. But it does. That's a thing that exists now. You can buy Space Rocks by Gary Weta. Uh, but hey, I'll be interested to see how much Gary is actually in Bandland. Uh, yes, they made Space Rocks. I don't know how many he made. But uh, if you go to his Twitter, you can see it. But apparently, he has made a version of it that exists in real life. Um, and I think he'll be selling that at his table in Bandland. But I love that Danny's going to be in Bandland. I think that rules. Um, that's taking the joke too far. I somewhat agree. I haven't seen the inside of it. I hope it's actually a fake thing. I do not know. About half the Little Run crew is doing back-to-back -back con weekends with Magic Fest Las Vegas. Yeah. Uh, I know a bunch of them are at, at that. Uh, it's not the, you know... The Chicago to East crew, I think it was just like two of them did the train thing, which is really fun. I'm, I'm bummed that, um, like, I'm not going to tell Graham what to do with his time and energies, ever. That's not my business. But uh, the PAX East portion of his travel logs didn't end up uh, coming out yet. And I'm going to be in at least some of that because we... We talked and hung out on uh, camera at one point, and I was like, oh, I want to be in that. And then also, I know he was shooting some stuff backstage at uh, at um, League of Heels, so I liked it. That, I would in genuine, genuinely be interested in hearing from some of the Loading Run fans that, uh, Loading Ready Run fans that have kind of figured out what I do based on our brief interactions. Uh, Recycle Wall, hello, welcome. Look at this. This is because you bought this. Thank you. We're working on it. Working on the Hono. We're working on shoulders for our Hono. I'm going to add more pieces to it and then put stickers on it. There's a lot of stickers on this kit, which is fine. It's a high grade. That's part of it. Uh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I know that a lot of them are at Magic Fest. Uh... I'm excited because there's some uh, Loading Ready Run folks that I've never met before that I think a few of them are going to be at PAX, and I would like to meet them. Ben and I are like internet friends, so I would like to meet him if he's going. I don't, I have not presumed to know who's going to what, but listening on audio only on the train. Be there soon. Data. I hear you. Well... Uh, I love that you're listening to the audio version of the of what is very much a 
a visual medium, but I am working on the Hono right now. Uh, I'm working on the shoulders of the Hono, uh, and it's uh, a really nice kit. Um, the uh, see-through orange pieces really pop in person. I don't, it doesn't, it, I mean, this doesn't work, but the overhead shot, um, I don't think it does it justice. This see-through orange is really nice looking. And I don't know. I don't know if it does it justice. Uh, I don't think it does. Although I will say the one problem is uh, it's hard to read the numbers because they are uh, see-through as well. Five and then four. Okay. Um, but yeah. I'm excited to, to see people. That's the thing I really like about PAX is just seeing folks. And p putting on shows, you know. You know me. I like putting on a show. Um, producing panels. I still have to... I need... It's been a little hard booking uh, Improvised Postmortem, this show. Because, like, what am I... No need to check off default people is... Uh, isn't going to be there because this will be the first uh, improvised postmortem I do without Jeff because Jeff will not be there because uh, it's too soon after the baby for him to go to Seattle. I can't talk about travel right now about doing any travel in my life because you know I, as you know my Everything is weird right now, and I just don't have the time for anything cool. I can't really, like, plan stuff, but uh, I really want to get out to, to San Francisco and see some folks. I miss Brad. I haven't seen Brad in a long time. And uh, I don't know if you know this, but Brad Shoemaker is one of the good ones. Like, Brad Shoemaker is, like, a top tier person that I like instantly found myself having a very nice rapport with. I'm certainly not alone in that, but Brad rules and, uh, Oh, he's an angel indeed. Um, he's great. He's just like a great guy to hang out with and talk to. Um, and, uh, would like to spend more time with him. Uh, and Brad has talked about this, you know, he's not, he didn't write a book about it like some people, but Brad doesn't necessarily love the whole public thing. Just does it. Uh, last brick says I'm excited for his, uh, quake server. If only because I never got around to making mine, getting mine going. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, Brad doesn't love the, the whole public speaking thing. The fact that I got Brad to do 404ing it to me was like one of the biggest pack. Like there's some big packs accomplishments. The hand I had in the giant bomb cards against humanity, uh, main show, the fact that we did the main theater at PAX West, the fact that we've done two main theaters at PAX East. Like I have a lot, uh, to be proud of when it comes to those shows and, and the work we've done there. But, one of the things I'm also really proud of is that, like, I got Brad to do a panel. Like, Brad, Brad has done out, like, honestly, outside of Lee, uh, not League of Hills, outside of Giant Bomb panels, I think Brad has done two. He did one about fighting games where he was, like, from the journalist perspective, and then... A Dota, I think he's done maybe a Dota, so maybe three. I think he's maybe done a Dota one. But Brad just doesn't do panels. So to get him on 4 4 it, that was a big accomplishment. I was really proud of that. Uh, all right, so now we got a bunch of five. We got to put a bunch of stickers on this thing, which is fine. Put a bunch of these on here. These are tiny stickers. And they're just going on these sides here. Gonna keep the green going. There's literally no green plastic. All the green in this kit all comes from stickers, except for the uh, beams. Um, 
the beams are that but there's no actual plastic for on the kit that is green all of the all of the green on this kit comes from stickers remember when I never did any stickers ever I found some kits you know you know I send kits out now I've been doing that for a while and I look at some of them and I'm like oh wow I didn't do I didn't do eye stickers for this I didn't do any stickers for this and now I try to do all of them We've even started doing some water and dry transfer stickers. I do more dry transfers in in the future. I'm going to try to do more dry transfers because those turn out pretty good. I don't hate those. Going on here. But yeah, I'm excited for packs next week. Um, let's see. What did I do today? So I, I shot the video about um, this that will go out tomorrow because this was bought off my wish list. Um, I, uh, shot some background and character videos, um, cause I usually shoot those on Thursday so that I can kind of just get them. I got in the habit of doing it on Thursdays. So I shot the next two weeks because next Thursday I'll be out of town. I will be nowhere near a green screen next week. So I shot two of them today. One of them I think is very funny and one of them's all right. They're not all. They're not all winners. Like the one uh, that that I went up yesterday that I'll link to when we in the show de or show description. Um, the one I uh, put out yesterday, like, is like I don't know. I don't think my acting is necessarily there. Is the emotion that I'm going for, but I like the concept and I think the photo was cool. I don't, but I don't think my performance is particularly great. Oh, we got a hiccup there. Hopefully that wasn't bad on your end, but that was a hiccup here on my end. Although it looks like I didn't drop any frames, so that's good. Uh, so yeah, so I'm just putting some stickers here. You can see that I gotta put them over here so you can see it. Just putting some more or green stickers on there, like well, accent stickers. And I think we're yeah. There's one other sticker that I think goes on the waist or the skirt, and then the stickers for the gun, which I don't necessarily like, but we'll take a look at. All right, our shoulders are done. We can keep um, building, building, building. Um, yeah, so I shot that. I shot my... Um, uh, uh, I do a Patreon thing. I don't know if I... I, I don't... You know, I mentioned this now and again, but I'll, I'll, I'll finish up here talking about that. Um, one of the... Uh, I do an exclusive thing for my Patreon where every month uh, I request questions. Uh, and I usually get two or three a month. And then I record a video where I uh, answer those questions. And it only goes out to my Patreon. And I did mine this week. Because uh, I knew that I had the time today to do that. In the middle of like applying for jobs and doing all that. I had some time to do that stuff. So I did it. Uh, so yeah, I shot a bunch of video stuff today. Um, and the closer look that will go up the Monday while I'm still in uh, Seattle. Because I was like, well, I won't have time to do it. And I don't want to. I don't want to bring something with me just to record out there. I'm like, no, nah, that's not gonna work. So I did that. I did a lot. I could have done some of this stuff on Saturday, but I didn't. Uh, I haven't signed like paperwork or anything for it, so I I don't want to like jinx myself. But I did. Um, it's possible that I am going to be working at a convention in New York at the end of the year. In November. Not, not technically in the year, but you know, close to the end of the year. Yeah, I haven't signed any paperwork for it, but uh, it looks like I will be working at the Crunchyroll booth uh, for Anime NYC, which is great. Um, I'm excited for the opportunity uh, to do that, um, and I'll be very good at it. Uh, I've never been to NY Anime NYC, but... Um, you know, it's a big convention. Uh, it'll be a month after uh, New York Comic Con, like exactly a month. So it'll feel like old hat. But one of the funny things about it that I think is, is funny is that they're like, hey, we know you live in New York, but we put up everybody in hotel rooms because that way you're close by. The Chavez Center, like, I don't know what hotel we're going to stay at, but it might not be super close, but it'll still be closer than having to have a commute. And I was like, that makes sense because... Sometimes the trains are just awful, and it's like, I don't want to take two hours for me to get home, 
But it does. It is weird to. Maybe y'all have had this before because of a work thing or because of like something else happening in your house or apartment or whatever. Staying in a hotel in your home city is just weird. It's a weird experience. I've done it a bunch because, you know, I used to work at a convention or I used to work at a, a festival that happened all weekend long and you had to be close. So I would stay in an Airbnb or a hotel just to be near it. And it's just a weird feeling to just be like, yep, I'm uh, going to a hotel and not my apartment. I don't know. It's strange. I like it, but it's weird. Oh, yeah, I'm excited to, to work at Anime Next um, and just have something going on. And to, you know, work with Crunchyroll. Um, you know, I'll talk about anime in the second half of the stream, but this is a good time to mention, because, uh, you know, I've had some new new watchers uh, on the streams, um, that I am, uh, I am not in any way, shape, or form sponsored by Crunchyroll. However, a friend who works for Verve, which is owned by Crunchyroll, does supply me with my Crunchyroll account, uh, my premium account which I use to watch anime, and I talk about that anime. Uh, so it is not a sponsorship, but uh, it is how I, you know, have that account is because of that interaction. Um, so anytime I talk about a show on Crunchyroll, you can take it with a grain of salt if you'd like. Trust that I generally, if I'm not interested in the show, I'm honest about it, like, do you love your mother and her two hit multi-target attacks? I stopped watching that show because it grossed me the fuck out and I was done watching it. Didn't want to watch it anymore. That is a show on Crunchyroll. Because uh, no one is telling me what I can and can't say or what I should and shouldn't say or anything like that. Never had a conversation in that regard. Never would have a conversation in that regard. That would be the quickest way for me to pay for the account myself and not talk about it. Definitely Hulu's not giving me anything because I talk so much shit about Hulu as a service. Uh, so yeah, they definitely don't give me anything. I can't imagine they ever would. Oof. I hate that there are two shows I watch on Crunchyroll. Or not Crunchyroll, Hulu. There are two shows I watch on Hulu and I hate that. I wish that they were both on Crunchyroll so I could just watch that. And I don't even have, I don't have Funimation, so, you know, there are a couple shows that I would probably watch that I don't. And I, right now there's nothing on, um, anim, uh, that on, um, uh, Amazon Prime that I'm interested in, but I, I keep my eyes peeled, you know, I try to keep up, see if there's something that's going on there. Oh, I've, uh, you know, we'll talk about the anime that I'm watch going to be watching, but before I talked about, like, upcoming stuff, I got a development that bums me out. I'm going to try to do some research on it now. Uh, my most anticipated show of next season, uh, which is in October, is um, Hatage uh, Kemon Michi. Kimono Michi, Kimono Michi, ha Hatage Kimono Michi, which is a wrestler isekai. It's a professional wrestler, gets sent to a mystical land uh, and tasked with defeating the de the uh, be demon beast there. And he's like, no, I like animals. And he ends up opening up a pet store. And I'm really interested in that show. I haven't read the manga. Um, I've heard good things about the manga. It is... Literally, if a mech shows up, it's everything I want in an anime. The only thing it doesn't have right now is, as far as I can tell, uh, is mechs. Um, I mean, obviously, it's a shonen show. Uh, it's like a shonen isekai. Uh, and there's animals and animal people. But... I th yeah, the thing that makes me feel a little uneasy about it is uh, are there suplexing mech animes? I don't believe so, Recyclable. Uh, 
I mean, there's, you know, some robot fighting shows, but I don't know if there are any of them that do wrestling. Um, yeah. So, um, Natsume Akatsuki is the creator of this show. And I'm excited about that. Um, because I don't think there's a lot of isekai done by women. And that's very cool. But also, uh, she created a Konosuba, which I really dislike. I don't want to say hate. I don't want to say hate. But it's not funny. I don't find it funny. It is so overrated. I just think it is a really bad... Uh, show uh konosuba god's blessing on this wonderful world um i looked up the name the full name of it uh it's a it is a it's a guy's a guy dies it gets tricked by a goddess who's terrible and i just think it's bad uh is this the one with the knockoff tiger mask yeah lashbrook i believe that he has like a a tiger mask like a knockoff tiger mask is like his mask because he's he's a masked wrestler um that has like a gimmick of animals like a you know i think that that's why he gets summoned is because like it's a misunderstanding that he's like the master of of beasts like the beast king or whatever and that's why he gets summoned and then he shows up and he's just like no no thanks this isn't what i want uh my next series I want to try is Cannon Busters on Netflix. Trailer looks good. Uh, I know that I've never seen Cannon Busters. I know the music for Cannon Busters is really good because I've heard the theme, but I can't tell you anything about the show. Uh, hi, Mr. Bob. Happy to have you here. Working on our Hano. Uh, glad to have you. I'm going to throw the Bear Cave Moat in there as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Harold just won $1.16 on HQ Words. Congratulations, Harold. Uh, that's a dollar you didn't have before the stream started. So, congrats you. Congratulations to you. But yeah, um, the fact that I don't think Kona Suba is good, uh, makes me worried that the jokes will be bad. Uh, also, when you're dealing with an isekai and animal people, they are often sexualized. I mean, also just women in general are sexualized in shonen anime. Uh, so I'm hoping that it's not... Because the premise is so fucking good that I'm going to be really bummed out if it's not a good show. Like... Huh. I want to go back to MGs, but the colors on this kit have me tempted. 100%, uh, Mr. Bob, the orange, the see-through orange, this like neon orange is so great and the red is so vibrant uh it's got too many stickers we put on all these green stickers and i don't like all the green stickers but in general it's great uh, everyone tells me that konosuba is good i haven't watched myself i just don't find any of it funny i don't find any of it enjoyable i've watched you know 10 episodes which is giving a lot 10 episodes is a fucking lot to, to of a show that you aren't, don't think is good but yeah, just never liked it. Oh, uh, good night, Harold. I'll see you on Saturday. Thank you for hanging out. Where give me an hour of your time? Yeah, I think ten is almost a full season. Like, I get well because I watched like three or four, and I was like, nah, no, 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 because it came out before I was really invested in in returning to watching a lot of anime. And then people were like, oh no, you should watch that if you like isekai shows. It's really funny. And here's the thing, folks. I don't think it's really funny. I think it's not great. But I know people who really like it. I just, it's not me. Not my thing. Um, all right, we're gonna, I'm going to finish this piece up and then we'll take a pause for the cause. I'll talk about ways you can support the stream if that's something you like to do. Uh, I'll drink some water because my throat's getting a little parched. And then we'll uh, get back into building uh, some uh, some of this model kit. Keep working on this Hono. Um, drink a little water first. Hi. 
I had a lot of queso and chips today, so I've had a very dry, like, everything. Uh, hello. This is the part of the stream where I take a moment. Uh, we call it the pause for the cause. This is where I just talk about ways that if you'd like, you can support the stream. First and foremost, if you're a subscriber, hey, let's throw those emotes out there. Let's throw the Bear Cave emote, the Lego emote, the Scythe emote. Uh, and show folks that aren't subscribers of the cool thing you get for $5 a month. Um, thank you very much for being a subscriber. If you're just watching, hey, that's great. Uh, you can always uh, sub with Twitch Prime. You link your Amazon with your Twitch. You get a free subscription every month. You have to manually renew that. If your subscription lasts, you have to manually renew that, and I would love it if you did. Uh, if you can't, you can use cash money as well. If you can't do that, I understand. I'm not asking for that. At the very least, hey, follow. Give me a follow. Turn your notifications on so you know when I'm streaming. Always really appreciate that. It's awesome when folks can subscribe. Um, I have other ways of supporting the stream. Uh, tell a friend. Have them come check out the Saturday stream or the Monday stream or some weird stuff I'm going to be doing while I'm away. If uh, I can't stream from my Airbnb, I might stream in one of those weird pods. Those are streaming pods. Maybe I'll play like Hearthstone this weekend or something. Because I bet those pods are not set up for me to build Lego. They probably don't have a second camera. Uh, and they probably won't want me to plug my camera in. Um, so that's, you know, watch a stream, tell a friend. That's a great way to support the stream. Uh, we'll go through these really quick and then we'll get back to the building. Because I know that some of you, this is a broken record. And I do this three times a week. Uh... You got to try. You should ask. Well, Mr. Bob, if I can stream from my Airbnb, uh, then it won't matter because I'll just do it from my Airbnb. The pods will only be because it'll be during the day and it'll be during the day on the West Coast. It'll only be if I can do it. So, um, Patreon.com slash Pat Bear. That's another way to support the stream. If you don't want to give money through this, you can do that. There's tiers. $5 a month gets you videos a day early. I'm going to put this up on Patreon, the archive of the stream up right after the stream's over, like as soon as possible. I always do that. Um, I also have an Amazon wish list. Uh, I added some stuff to this wish list that's pretty cool. I'm going to mention a few things I just added to it uh, that I think are great. Is I added uh, some one-piece model kits. Now, we did the um, Tony Tony Chopper kits, but did you know that Bandai put out the... Going Mary and the Thousand Sunny model kits. I don't know what grade you would say these are. They're reasonably priced. They're probably pretty easy to put together. But I would love to build a pirate ship on stream. That sounds fun. Uh, oh, yeah, it's four runners. And one call a sticker sheet. Yeah, four runners. It's definitely a high grade. That's definitely an easy kit to build. But I would love to build the Going Merry or the Thousand Sunny on stream. That's on my wish list right now. Take a look at my wish list. You jump ahead. I have Lego sets to build that I have purchased. I will not be bought building those until I finish with the kits that get sent to me in the mail. That's what happens. If you buy something on wish list, I buy it sooner. Uh, USA Gundam Store, if you don't want to use Amazon wish list, you can buy a gift card and then send me a DM. My... DMs are open on Twitter, or you can message me a whisper here um, on uh, Twitch. Send me that code. I'll buy something there. I also have a coffee. And then anything I make on, uh, sooner or later, I'll get money from YouTube. It'll be a long time coming for the next check. But uh, money I get from Twitch and Patreon and coffee, which I'm about to put in there, uh, that all goes to me buying kits to do, you know, to build. Uh, that's where, uh, that's how I bought this. This was bought from a wish list. Um, when you are away at PAX, do your packages, uh, still arrive to you safely? Yes. Um, my apartment is just me and my roommate and then our landlord. Our landlord will put packages on the step. My roommate will put packages in the kitchen. So me being away does not negate that. So if anything's coming while I'm out of town, It'll just be a surprise when I get back. And maybe I'll have to do a video where I 
open up everything. But yeah, no, that's not a problem because it's it's going uh, to the home address. And even if it was going to my post office, that I would just you know clean it out and it would be fine. But yeah, that won't be a problem. Um, uh, I know that somebody, I don't know who, somebody bought something on my wish list that hasn't arrived yet because I think it's mostly because it was bought in Japan and it's just slow shipping, but, uh, I've got a couple things, you know, to build. Um, real quick, we'll get back into building in just a moment. The build with bear community is my discord. Hey, hop in the discord. It's fun. It's fun. We'll get to building in just a moment, but yeah, discord. It's good. Uh, my closer look I put on Monday about the kit bashing project I did. This is worth taking a look. If you you know if you missed the live building of it, I can talk about the pros and cons, what I learned from it, and the modifications I made after the streams were over. Um, and then my background of characters that I did yesterday, that put up yesterday. This background of character is fun. Like as I said, I think emotionally I didn't act the, I didn't act great in it, but I think the premise is really fun, and the photo is a cool photo. So that's it. I'm going to talk about some anime. Um, we have five shows to talk about. Um, we'll talk about some anime. I'm going to keep building. Reminder, you know, if you want to subscribe, if you want to gift a gift subscription. Oh, Bits and Coins. I forgot to talk about uh, Cheer. Uh, you can see the leaderboard right now. Ultron is the head leaderboard with 100. Uh, Harold and uh, Dirty are tied with 10. Uh, it resets the beginning of every month, but if you want to be the head of the leaderboard for the rest of August, you could just give me bits and coins, and it just goes to more money for me, uh, more of my cut uh, when the time comes. It is another way to support the stream if that's something you'd like to do. And again, you are not obliged to do that ever. You never have to give me a dime. You can just watch and hang out. Uh, but I do, you know, I do say like, hey, if you want to tell a friend about how fucking rad this is, Feel free to tell a friend. Do you really like what I do here? Um, so, anime talk. Black Clover. This is rough. There's some really good fight scenes. The reveal. This is some rough stuff. The elves. The elves have taken over. The resurrection spell means that they now are control of a bunch of human bodies. And they picked some really tough humans. Uh, it's going to be really hard for our heroes to deal with that because Asta, our main character, he already doesn't want to kill people that are, that are trying to kill him and are his enemies. He's certainly not going to want to hurt people that are his friends and coworkers that have been like taken over by a, uh, mysterious force that he doesn't understand. Uh, and apparently his sword, you know, his anti-magic doesn't work on it, which sucks for him. Uh, can't undo it. But, um, yeah, it, Black Clover, the fight scenes were really good. You got some good Yami stuff where he's just yelling people. Yami's like, you better be alive or I'll kill you is such a stupid thing to say, but is so, like, so, like, ingrained in that character of, like, Yep, that is a thing that Yami would say. He would definitely threaten to kill you if you die. Um, it's good. That show is good, and I like it a lot. Uh, what other shows could I talk about right now? Um, so, Are You Lost? Are You Lost is really good about cliffhangers that don't mean anything. Because I really thought that last week's cliffhanger into this week was going to be a big game changer for the series. It was not. It was fine. It was funny. It was a funny reveal. But it was not a big deal at all. It was mostly just a dumb thing. Also, I've talked about this before about how fucking horny ass horny a show it is. Because it is just like such a fucking horny show uh which like i'm not against i don't mind a show that like has hormones um but so this is a show about four young ladies who get trapped on a deserted island uh 
and that's fine. They found a they found a, a natural hot spring, and so they all take off their clothes to get in the hot spring, and then they're all just like, you know, guarding whatever. And I'm like, really? An anime set on a beach is doing a hot spring episode? Come on. Come the fuck on. Really? But they did. They did a fucking beach episode. And a series that takes place on the beach. They did their hot springs, hot water, shit. And it like ends. It's funny how it works out. It's like a funny bit. Uh, yeah, you're right. It, you know, like for the most part, the show like starts off kind of horny and then settled into not being as horny. Uh, and that's, that, that was good, um, because there is, there's like no slice of life this season. There's some dramas, but the shows I thought, I thought this was going to be a slice of life. And I thought that, um, if it was for my daughter, I'd even defeat a demon Lord was going to be a slice of life. It turns out that neither are really are a slice of life. This one kind of is, but it's more action and, if it was for my daughter, I'd even defeat a demon lord. I'll just jump to that. That show is a drama. It's cute and fun, but like the main character, Latina, is like going through shit. And she's like, it's not like, oh, this thing is forgotten. Like, no, her trauma is real and they they deal with it. They deal with it a lot. They're like working on it. Uh, it's a really interesting series. Uh, and I'm very surprised at like that that show is not a slice of life because I really thought it was and as I said I thought that like um, yeah uh, it's I guess, I guess like Are You Lost is is somewhat of a comedy and like an action like an action comedy which is really surprising I was very surprised with that. Um, I still really like it. It's still great. It's like a half, you know, length show. So it doesn't, it's not a huge investment. So I would recommend it. Uh, so these arms have a lot of weird connections because they've got to like move around a bit for the transformation because this does transform into its bird mode. So the arms go on a little weird, but we're getting that in there. Um, it's the guy cheat magician, which is the least isekai name for an isekai. Honestly, um, I'm surprised. I'm engaged with it. It is very by the numbers. The harem is growing, uh, and has seemingly has no sign of stopping. Uh, it is somewhat of an interesting show. At least, here's the thing. At the very least, this guy, Cheat Magician, is very open with the idea that it is by the numbers. They're telling you right off the bat, hey, just so you know, some force is leading this dude in the way he is. Because, like, the thing they were trying to get at was hit this summoner, which is very rare, the main guy, getting the summon he needed. So they presumably murder a character. And that is enough emotion for him to unlock this ability that people had talked about and understood that he had. He just didn't know how to unlock it. It's just like, well, you could have fucking told him. Didn't have to kill a character. Presumably. I assume that she's dead. Perhaps she is not. But I bet she's not. The assassin turned nice person because he was nice to her. It's fine. Uh, honestly, like, I'm overall just the forest guy that came out this season. One, I stopped watching. One, I, it was last, you know, Ari Forta started off as this, is the best one. I'm losing interest in it, uh, because it is just becoming very rote. And then this one's, I'm liking more. Um, and then the other isekai that I watch. Because uh, I do watch three out of four this season. Uh, Demon Lord Retry. Not a lot happened in this episode. It was a building episode. Um, uh, 
really honestly not a lot happened. The Devil Child, um, the blonde, is now joining the crew. She's now part of the team. Uh, he's like, uh, hey, help me out. And she's like, great. Who do you want me to kill? And he's like, no, that's not what... Why does everybody think that's what I want them to do? It's it's pretty funny. Um, I think Demon Lord Retry is fine. Uh, but, yeah, it's not great. It's just okay. Oh, I was going to say, so I am intrigued with, if it's for my daughter, I'd even defeat a Demon Lord. But, like, there's pokes here and there, the fact that, like, it's about a guy who uh, takes care of this young devil child, adopts her, and is going to take care of her and all that. And she refers to him by his name. And I guess, like, he never, like, officially adopts her. He just, like, raises her. She gets, like, jealous about things. Like, she thought there was, like, a bit where she thought that he was going to get married. And she got really mad about that. And it's like, all right. Okay, anime. I know where you're going. Hopefully you don't go there by the 12th episode when the series is done. I don't think you will because it's episode like 8. So my assumption is that it won't go there. But hey, I, I'm going to make an assumption that in the manga of if it's for my daughter or even to defeat, defeat a demon lord, eventually she grows up and like marries him. Because uh, she's going to outlive him anyway. Like that's my assumption, which is like, come on. Come on. Don't do this anime. There's no need to do this shit. It's just weird. And unnecessary. Yes. Ugh indeed. It's like just fucking be the, the let's just do this like father daughter raising thing. That's a fun storyline. It's 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 funny and interesting to like have this dynamic of this like kind of goofy adventurer who's like not necessarily great at being an adventurer or he's like a good adventurer he just like doesn't really have any direction in life raising a child and like that sounds great I'd rather see that anime uh, but like I said my assumption is we won't get there in the show that's probably just in the manga when they run out of things to do uh, I'm more excited about the, the you know the stuff that comes out tomorrow and because my Friday anime stuff is great you know Dr. Stone even though they introduced in my opinion too many characters at once but whatever uh, Fire Force which I think is just so underrated um, I think it, it's not getting the love it should be getting it's just a really solid shonen show um, uh, Accelerator I stopped watching um, but you know there's still oh and uh uh is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon? Don Machi, season two. This last episode, as I said, was my least favorite from last week. It was my least favorite of the season, but like, I'm excited for this one to see where the story goes. So we'll see. All right. Working on our legs here. Uh, let me see. That probably is all of the anime I wanted to talk about. So let me look real quick. Black Clover, Are You Lost? It's a guy, Cheat Magician, Demon Lord Retry. Oh, Demon Lord Retry's on Hulu. I try to remember to say that. Uh, and if it's for my daughter, I'd even defeat a Demon Lord. Yep. All right. Okay. Oh. Um, the class action lawsuit against Riot has been settled. There are other suits that are going to arbitration. Uh, that is... Uh, no idea what that necessarily means, but... That is great, because um, I don't know what the settlement is, because I'm just kind of looking at that. But in general, that's good, because um, uh, I have 
I think five people I know work at Riot. Um, so recyclable, uh, the the demand the the changes that they were making were we're going to stop doing forced arbitration, and if from this point on you have options, but they weren't going to retroactively uh, stop that because that was their policy in people's contracts was. Uh, forced arbitration of issues. So this is one of those that was had to go to arbitration um, because they were because that was their thing because arbitration benefits the company because the people who do arbitrations are often hired uh, or have a relationship or it is often in the best interest of the arbiters to side with the company so they can get hired and keep working with that company. Because if they keep losing arbitration, maybe they'll go with different arbiters, which is a nightmare. Um, but yeah, so apparently that wasn't going to go retroactively. Yes, they don't have to admit guilt. Yeah. Yes, and settling doesn't mean any, do, you know, settling hopefully means that they will settle all of them and moving forward, people can go to court. Uh, hopefully there'll be some changes that get made that consistently they've been talking about that for quite some time though so who knows uh my hope is that it leads to a better work environment for the many people uh at riot yeah and they wanted to do like small face-to-face -face meetings they didn't want large groups of riot to meet with each other they wanted to do like lots of face-to-faces and it was just like they they handled it like a company that like seemingly was just like this is not going to be a problem like a company that was just like we are not worried about any of this and it was like Meh, maybe you should be a little concerned with what's going on maybe but i don't know i'm sure i'll hear more details of this i look forward to reading articles about it uh, and I hope that the work environment for my friends is better in the future. Because I always hope that. Because I had a friend start there a couple months before a lot of this came to light. So, and a few friends that have been there for a while. Well, I'm hopeful. Hopefully the beginning of a change. I mean, you know. Also, like... I am not in a position here where I can talk to people about like, I, I've never said you should quit. This place is awful. I've said you should look for work out elsewhere, but I've never been one to be like, well, this place sucks and you should get out of there. Like now, like um, some of the companies that I have applied to uh, in order to get work are companies that I would be bummed to work for. But I am still applying to them because they will be jobs where I would start working there and as like on day one be looking for new work. But at the same time, accepting that rebuilding my savings and uh, paying down my debt is, you know, worth it working at a place that I don't necessarily agree with their mission statements or what they're into. There are certain exceptions to that, exception, exceptions to that. Like, uh, I have not applied to Fox News to work in video production there. That comes across my desk or, you know, comes across LinkedIn occasionally. And I'm like, no, I couldn't. I just know I couldn't, but uh, have I applied for a couple jobs at Amazon? Yes, I have. Do I feel good about that? No, I don't feel good about that at all, but I've applied to them because I need to earn money to do things like live, but those, yeah. The first day of me working at Amazon would be me working on my on updating my resume to include that I worked at Amazon. As I looked for something else. 
Because that's just part of it. And I'm understanding of that. And I think people would know that if I was like, you know, hey, I'm working this job. Like, people know I've been working, I've been looking for work all year. So, almost the entire year. So, if I announced where my new position was, I think people would be like, yeah, okay, well, we understand. Uh, we'll see. I got a few uh, few irons in the fire that I'm I, I am optimistic about. I should say. Uh, we'll see if any of those turn into jobs. But I uh, I am optimistic about a couple of them getting farther uh, in the process. One of which would be like, yeah, I'd be good at this. One of which I can do from home. Which is great, because that's where I live. Working from home, would be, I would be fine with. This is doing like, just doing customer support for a company. It's like a company that um, allows you to have your own website on there and sell things. It's one of the many, many companies that does that. Um and then it's just like customer support. And a lot of customer support is like, oh, your product didn't come? Okay, well, let's see if we can fix that. Or it's not what you were promised? Well, sorry. <laughs> we'll add it to the list of complaints about that product or that those people. We'll see if we can help you. So I don't know. The, the thing that appeals to me is, one, obviously, a job. And two, work from home. Don't hate the sound of that. I have, uh, while I do other things and, you know, work for other stuff and not have to be in a work environment. I mean, you do have to be careful of stuff like that and, like, not, like, your commute would be instant. Yes, you just wake up roll over, sign in, and do the work. So we'll see. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know. I'm not saying the name of the company because I don't want to jinx anything. But I also like, you know, I've applied a few things that are just totally outside of what I normally do, trying to make a transition. As long as I'm, uh, every marketing place seems like a scam. Like, obviously, that's where is, marketing is where I had the two, uh, clearly, pyramid schemes. Pyramid scheme one and then pyramid scheme, uh, the return. Uh, but every other marketing thing, like, the descriptions of what the job is are so vague and so, like, whatever. And then they always list a salary, an hourly rate. And then maybe in the description they will say, you don't start with it. Maybe they say that. That it's all performance based. Most of them don't. So now when I'm applying to marketing things, I just say like, hi, could you let me know if this is a salaried position or an hourly position to say, or if it is performance based? Because I don't want to waste my time. If it's an hourly rate plus commission, maybe I'd be interested. If the hour, depends on what the hourly rate is. But if it's commission only, I don't got time for that. I don't have time for that. Uh, all right. So H1. Uh, commission only is a great thing for young people without debt. If you don't have debt, if you're not paying for anything, if you're not trying to, like, take care of yourself, commission's great. It's a great way to move fast. You work hard, and you make things happen, and you get things done. But in my position, no, that is not what I want. I'm going to work real hard. I'm going to do a great job. I'm going to make things happen. And then I'm going to get paid for the hours I put in, for the hard work I did. 
I'm going to drink a little more water, folks. Reminder, maybe it's time when you drink some water. We'll see. As I said. Um, yeah, I don't know if any of it's going to work out, but I'm going to, you know, give it my all with all of these jobs. We'll see. One of them's got to work. But I am excited about, you know, PAX next week and trying to, I'm trying to make sure I relax this weekend. You know, I've got uh, some work tomorrow night at the Brooklyn Comedy Collective. I've got uh, uh, a lunch thing planned on Saturday. And of course, I'm streaming Saturday night. So I'm excited for that. I've got to film a closer look thing on Saturday. Do that as well. Streaming. Finally streaming on a Saturday evening. So excited for that. Uh, what are y'all doing this weekend? Anybody got anything fun going on? Uh, let me know in the chat if you've got anything you're excited about for the weekend. You're doing anything? C -c 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 cool. Uh, <laughs> this goes like this. There it goes. Had this on wrong. Now I got it right. Recyclable says, I got into playing old Genesis games. I beat Shining Force 1 yesterday. Probably going to play more retro games this weekend. That sounds pretty fucking cool. Have fun. Enjoy, yeah, enjoy playing some old games this weekend. That sounds good time. You know, I'm going to be playing more Hearthstone this weekend, probably. I'll probably give Wolfenstein Youngblood a shot, says Ultron. I have not played that because it did not seem great. And while it is inexpensive, it's a, you know, a $30 game or whatever, uh, I still don't have a lot of spending money to spend on games. So I did not pick it up. Um, there's a new big quest in... Heart uh, in uh, in Pokemon Go, so I'll probably be catching Pokemon this weekend. Tomorrow I'm gonna go out and do that probably for some of the weekend. But yeah, I heard you know I know some people that enjoyed it. I have friends who played it multiplayer and seemed to enjoy Young Blood, but also Giant Bob totally spoiled the ending. Yeah, yep, they'll do that. But also, who knows? I'm sure the next game will be before Youngblood. That's my assumption. My assumption is the next mainline game will end with wh uh, whatever happened before. Uh, are you going to play Pokemon Trainers? I don't know, Recyclable. I don't know if I need another Pokemon game in my life. I honestly like have two because I still play Pokemon Shuffle, which is a match game that nobody plays. Uh... And they stopped supporting. Well, they stopped making new content for it. But I still play a lot of the puzzles. Because I just like a match three game. And then of course I have Pokemon Go. So I don't know if I'm going to try trainers. I might. I just uh, I haven't made the decision if that's something I'm going to do or not. Alright. So 17. 15. But I don't know. I played that on 3DS. It was fun. Oh yeah. Yeah. Pokemon Shuffle was on was on the uh, store as well. Yeah, I have it for iOS. I enjoy it. I still like log in every day and get my bonus coins and whatever and try it out. Have fun with it. But yeah, I in general enjoy that game. So, all right, we did one leg. Working on the other leg. We'll keep going. But yeah, anybody else got any plans for this weekend? Let me know what you're doing. What you got going on in your life. What's happening? It's always fun to hear from y'all and let me know what you're doing. Um, yeah, I just haven't had the bandwidth, like, financially to go with new games. I'm going to play a bunch of stuff at PAX. That's kind of like my jump in for some games. Um, and my role-playing... My role uh, 
group dissolved and I've been hoping that it will reignite but it doesn't look like it is so that's rough it was uh we played on discord so it was very easy it was just like a bunch of people enough people wanted to play then we would play and it was fun but that group dissolved which is a bummer I'd love to get that back together someday figure out how to get that uh, but yeah, do, 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 B24 and B12. B12 is here. We're getting a lot of progress done on our Hono. Uh, I don't think, you know, we're not going to finish it today, but we will, we will get through the body by the end of today because we have very little leg left to put together and then we'll put together the waist. You know, we we'll probably won't finish the weapons today but we'll we'll finish it up on Saturday so that's good and then Saturday we'll then start and finish this because this is a really easy thing to build nice and fast and then we will uh, uh, start a Lego set which is fun it's good to know it's nice knowing what to build next and then I gotta like I said got stuff to work on this weekend Four. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, nothing else really going on with me. Nothing super exciting to talk about. We talked about a lot of stuff going on. I'll have to try to find things to do to be able to talk about on Saturday. It's always the odd thing sometimes. Uh, last night was really fun. If you didn't join it, uh, in on the fun... Um, it's, uh, the archive is up on my, uh, YouTube. Um, but, uh, yeah, we played a bunch of Jackbox games. Played Bracketeering twice, which I'm really happy about. Got to play Fibbage, which I really like. We didn't do the Rap Battle, which I was surprised. And we didn't do, uh, Quiplash, so. But I'm, I was happy with what we did play, because, uh, sometimes it feels very samey. So, it was nice to, uh, to do something, you know, to play a few things that we don't normally play. It often gets a little, you know, eh. um, uh, not grind style. I do not have a P.O. box. That is a thing that I will be getting at some point, uh, in the near future. I do not have one right now. Uh, right now, the best way to, uh, to support the stream is to either buy something on my Amazon wish list, which will just get sent to me. And that way I don't have my address out there cause they'll just send it. Uh, or, uh, which is in the show description of every show, and I'll, I'll put in there. That That is the easiest way, is just to buy kits that I would like to build there. Um, uh, I would like to have a wish list, or sorry, a mailing uh, a P.O. box, that, that is, but right now I am uh, underemployed, and that is uh, a thing that would be a bad uh, use of my money right now. Um, but yeah, it's like, you know, there's, that for a lot of August, there was that sale on model kits at like Barnes and Noble and a few things that people were like, oh, hey, this is so much cheaper than on Amazon. I'm like, yeah, just don't have the ability to get it. Uh, all right. But yeah, that is that is on the list of things I would like to do is hook that up. All right, keep working on our legs here. This is like, you know, overall just like a solid, well-built kit. There's some fun components to it. Uh, you know, I, as I said, I don't love the 144 scale on for streams because, you know, there's smaller kits. Uh, uh, Master Grade, the 100 scale Master Grade is generally where I like to build. But this kit is just, you know, one, it's a wing Gundam, you know, altern alternate. And we always build, you know, anything from Gundam Wing. I'm going to build on stream. It's one of those stream rules. If it was on Wing, or if it's Wing related, I'll build it. And then also, like, it's a unique kit. The fact that it's from the photo book thing in a hobby magazine in Japan. It's not even the manga. It's not even, like, the... Um, 
the Shenlong that they put out that has a big sword and shield that's from it's from a manga like it's from a manga, but it's like a separate thing. This is from like a photo thing in a magazine. <laughs> I don't know. It's very strange. But excited to work on it. Cause it's a it's a I think this is a fun version of that. Oops. I don't love how these uh some of these connectors I don't necessarily love, but I think it'll work out okay. It might mean this kit needs like a stand, but should be alright. I can put a little pressure on there, get it to do what I need to do. At least the legs. None of the legs need the legs don't need any stickers, which is nice. All right, legs are done. Let's put together the waist. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I don't know what four was for. Maybe it's the. Oh, I bet it's on the. Hmm. Yes, okay. Uh, just looking, sorry. Uh, I stopped talking there, which happens every now and again. Yes, sticker four goes on the shield, which is also the cockpit for bird mode. I was wondering where that last, because there was like a sticker that, a green sticker that was unaccounted for. And I was wondering what it was from. That's from that. All right, we're going to build the waist now. We've gotten a lot done with this kit. We started with just the chest. We've done the head, both arms, both legs. That is what happens when you work on a 144 scale kit. You get results. As you put the work into it, it, uh, it comes together pretty quickly. All right. Okay. And there. Yeah, let's see. I talked about weekend stuff going on. Uh, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, yeah. PAX West next week. Uh, and then October, New York Comic Con, and then at uh, the end of, uh, and then uh, Anime NYC, and I believe those will be all the conventions I'm doing this year. The nice thing is only one of them is out of town, and that rules. We we'll have to travel to one of them. Very excited about that. Oh, there it goes. Uh, although I guess, uh, I said before, thinking, I love translucent parts. Do you need to add them in more sets? I agree, Ultron. Ultron. I mean, part of the thing that makes this is, is these, these pieces. The, these pieces here really make it stand out, uh, are really going to make this swords look cool. Because, like, yeah, big red swords, I'm all for, but with these pieces, I think it's really going to go well. Um, no, I'm always up for that. Uh, translucent pieces, I think, really help shape the kit. Uh, oh, I, I guess... PAX Unplugged, I guess I'm going to. I haven't... I, I've I've been submitted on one panel for PAX Unplugged. I guess I should submit... Uh, I should see when the submission deadline for that is. Uh, when is the deadline for that? deadline for that is oh September 21st I have time I have a month to submit my panel for that but uh, yeah I guess I'm going to go to that because um, it's just easy to go to PAX Unplugged uh, that's just that's the first week in December so that's not bad I can do that um, but yeah I think I'll I definitely am going to go to that because I have a good time I just think yeah like it's so close, and 
a bunch of my tabletop friends go, so it is a great way to see them and hang out. So I'm like, yeah, I'll go to that. I should put word out that if people want me to work in their booth, I'm available. Try to get out, do that, get out ahead of that. Help pay for my uh, Airbnb that weekend. Although, as I said, also I've said this before, uh, um, Philadelphia has not figured out what PAX is yet. The Airbnbs are still reasonably priced, which it, which rules. Uh, I could do that. I could do that. We just go in really quickly. See, even though it's December, it's still like the the first week of December. So it's like you're not dealing with holiday stuff. Uh, which is awesome. Um, but yeah. Let's see. I'm literally just like looking updates. Let's see if I came in. Let's see. I came in on. Just came that day in. And then left that night. Oh, yeah. Oh, this just... Obviously, like, I'm looking at it today, and so that's, you know, months in advance. Not not that many months in advance, right? August, looking at December dates, like, yeah, that's, a, that's a, in advance. But, like, we're talking, like, the cost of a night in Seattle for PAX West. Finding this place is, like... This is a, I'm right now I'm looking at a studio that's $77 a night. Like that's ridiculous. That's just unbelievably ridiculous. Uh, I did also drop a piece, which is frustrating. So hopefully I will find the piece I dropped. I dropped uh, the other half of this, which is part of the side skirt. So hopefully I'll find that momentarily I can also look in my other 144 scales and probably find it somewhere but yeah $77 a night is for a studio is unbelievable I bet there are rooms for like 50 a night like I don't even look at the location of that but like that's just so fucking cheap. This is like unbelievably cheap. Uh, oh, I have to do this here. G1, 12, and G1, 13. G12, 13. Oof. Yeah, the only problem with this translucent is uh, it is sometimes hard to see the pieces that I need on there. So this is red. This is not the translucent. This is 12 and 13 on this. I got it. I understand what I'm doing now. Pat, please help. I'm looking at Ava 1. Popcorn buckets on eBay. What? Lastbrook, what are you talking about? I'm looking at Eva Unit 1 popcorn buckets on eBay. Here's my question. Lastbrook, are you going to put popcorn in it? Okay, I'll say this. If you are going to get an Evangelion figure or model kit... And then you're going to turn that bucket upside down and that's going to be the platform that you display those action figures or model kits on. Then, all right, go get your shit. Get it done. But if that's not what you're doing and instead you're just buying a weird piece of pop culture popcorn bucket, don't do that. But if you're going to make that a stand for some Eva shit, that's a very unique and weird stand. So I'm into that. I built the EVA uh, 01 Master Grade, and now I'm hooked on Gunpla. 
Uh, this is a fun fact for folks. We talked about this on stream. The first ever perfect grade was, uh, uh, was an Evangelion, not a Gundam. And since then, it's been all Gundams. But the very first perfect grade they did was our big purple dumb friend. Uh, that was their test bed for perfect grade. And now it's all just every other gun. You know, it's all Gundam after that. I really can't find that little piece, and I really hope I do, because then I can put this part on there. That'd be nice. But we can put this together first, then we'll deal with that. The eyes light up and the mouth opens. No, Lashbrook! I want to send that to you. The, uh... Uh... So it's part of some Eva versus Godzilla attraction. Uh, all right. Well, let me look on. Let me, let me deal with this here. Um, do they have any Eva model kits on here? They've got the action figures. Uh, they've got... Yeah, so... Well, they got the high grade. The high grade EVO 01 test type is on there. I don't know if they have the MG. Um... I'm putting the high grade on there. If you want to buy the high grade for me to build, or er, I'll build the high grade of the, uh, I'll build the high grade of the O1 because that seems like a silly thing for me to do. But I don't think the master grade is up there. Oh, the PG Eva. It's supposed to be miserable. FYI. Is that what you want me to put on the wish list? The, the, I'll put the high grade on there anyway, but... Uh, uh, I don't know if the PG is even available. Let's look it up. Uh, it is there. Uh, yeah, it's... All right, I'm putting it on my wish list too. If you want to buy this... I will build the Evangelion Perfect Grade, the first ever Perfect Grade. It is very expensive. You should buy me some other model kit for me to build that is not that. But now I have two Evas on my wish list, and I don't know. It's in God hands now. Uh, hello, bless you. Welcome. Uh, happy to have you here. Uh, last Rook. Look, I don't think you should buy that. But you can. Uh... I don't think you should. I don't think you should buy that, buy that item. All right, let's put the legs on this kit. We are uh, basically body complete here. We got to build weapons, which we will be building the weapons uh, on our stream on Saturday. Um, we will finish the big swords. We will finish the wing, uh, jetpack wings. We will finish the shield. That'll be a lot of our Saturday. We'll be doing that. I will find the piece that fell that I need to put this on, uh, which I might even look in my other high grades if I can't find it, but I'll find it and put it on there. Um, I'm no stranger to buying things I shouldn't be bought a $40 metal dice set a couple weeks ago. That sounds fun. But yeah, Lashbrook, I don't know if you should buy a Evangelion popcorn bucket, but I mean, get a deal. I don't know. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rissa fan. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We are going to wrap things up today. Uh, I was happy to build and have you be here. Uh, I will see you on Saturday. hope you all can come hang out with me on Saturday. Uh, i got to find that piece that dropped, and hopefully I will as I clean up. So thanks for watching. I will see you next time on the next Build a Bear Workshop. Bye-bye. See you Saturday. 9